How's everybody? Blessed and highly favored and flavored. Everyone say, I'm the salt. I'm the salt. Not the pepper. See, because the salt preserves. Amen? Amen. Sometimes pepper burns. Praise God. We are preserved in the presence of God. I have a message from the King of Glory. <laughs> Grab your swords. Lord, grant wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and revelation that there may be an impartation and a change in everyone's life tonight. In Jesus' name. Romans 12, uh, Revelation 12. She Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Rev, Revelation. Revelation chapter 12, associated with the only reverent one. <laughs> glory, glory. Listen, if you can grab hold of this tonight, you'll never be the same. You will grab hold of this tonight. Amen. Amen. So we don't never have to be the same. <laughs> We're going forward, pressing in, penetrating darkness. Amen. Amen. In verse 7, where are you there? Let's speak it together. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, known as the serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. Who does what? Deceive he the deceives world. the whole world. Mm. Even people who are called Christians are being deceived. Amen. And he was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So where is Satan and the angels? They're associated with the earth and its atmosphere. There's three dimensional realms there is the earth which we call the first dimension amen for me and you this is the first dimension from god it's the third dimension that's why paul was taken up to the third heaven amen the second dimension is known as the second heavenlies that's actually where satan's kingdom reigns but they go to and fro so they're in the, first, the second and first dimension. They do not have access to the third dimension unless the Lord calls them up to check in. Hallelujah. It says something here now. So we know that Satan, Lucifer, so forth, has been removed from the third dimension, the third heaven, where God reigns, sent into the second and first. He goes to and fro, and his angels were sent with him. So he has control of a third of the angels that were created. And it says here, Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and the strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. That is so vitally important. The power of his Christ has come for the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. It did not say anything about the power of Jesus. It didn't say anything about the power of the Son of God. It said the power of Christ has come. I want you to grab hold of this. Is everybody okay? And it says, and they, aver, they overcome the enemy, the devil, in the powers of darkness, the fallen angels, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. That's the third dimension. But woe to the inhabitants of the earth 
and the sea, for the devil has come down to you and having great wrath because he knows that his time is what? He knows his time is short. This is why you're seeing all kinds of stuff going on right now because he knows his time is short. He's doing everything he can to prevent the power of Christ to continue to eliminate his kingdom. Now, the dragon, serpent, so forth, that's reptilian. Somebody got it. In fact, the serpent in the garden was a reptile. And one of the things that occurred is when they lost their angelic beings, God changed them. They were beautiful at one time. But the problem is, is because they can deceive individuals. That's why the word even says that Satan can come as an angel of light because he can deceive people with a false light. In fact, he deceives many people with a false doctrine. This, the most important thing out of this whole thing is it says that the dragon, the serpent, the reptilian, and so forth, Satan and his angels were cast to the earth. Only the power of his Christ can overcome the enemy. Do you understand that? Only Christ can overcome darkness. Only Christ, the power of Christ, can overcome fallen angels, demons, devils, and all the demonic forces. Only the Christ. Now it says here that they overcome with the blood of the testimony. In other words, there's something important for you and I to know. You and I are united in Christ as we are born again. This is the only place you and I are united, is in Christ. I'm going to talk more about this in a minute. Okay, so here we are. We are united in Christ. How are we united in Christ? We are united as a family through the blood. I'm going to say that again. We are united as a family through the blood. Now, many of us in the natural realm have come from many bloods. Amen? But God doesn't look at that anymore when you are in Christ. So you might have been adopted. You might have been whatever, uh, you know, and, and hatched. I don't, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but it doesn't matter what blood you came from. Does everybody understand that? You are now united as a family through the blood of Christ. So look at your brothers and sisters and, and welcome them to the family. See, everyone in here is a brother and sister united in Christ through the blood. We've got to stop looking carnally and start looking spiritually with spiritual eyes. We're united through the blood of the Lamb. Does everybody get it? Amen. Only through Christ. <laughs> Praise God. Now, our testimony and the law of the Spirit of eternal life, you're, listen, your testimony, your, everything that you and I are taught on, it, we're tested on. You know what that brings? A testimony. In fact, the word testimony has a word called test in it. Hello. So everything you're taught, you will be tested on. That's why you're building a testimony. Why? Because you're tested on everything you're taught, and it's becoming a testimony. So everybody get that? So stop grumbling and complaining why you're going through stuff. Because God wants to make sure that you got what you've been taught. And you're putting it into practice because we're earning trust. Amen? Good. And it says, and they did not love their lives to death. <laughs> Again, that's that perfect law of the spirit of eternal life. What is the perfect law of the spirit of life? Deny yourself, pick up your cross and fight, which is a sword, and follow. That is the perfect law of the spirit of life. That's how everything is fulfilled. You can't do nothing until you start fulfill the perfect law of the spirit of life. Is everybody okay? Genesis 6. Oh, hallelujah. United in Christ. Amen. Amen.
Genesis chapter 6. Now it came to pass when men began to multiply in the face of the earth. That was humans. And daughters were born to them. Then the sons of God, these were the angels. See, in the Old Testament, angels were known as sons of God. In the New Testament, we are known as sons of God. The sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were beautiful, and they took, they what? They took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. And so these were fallen angels that put on flesh, came into this realm, and went and took women. In fact, some of them took wives that were already married. And they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his day shall be 120 years. There were giants on the earth in those days. This is how giants came about. I'm not going to get all into this. And also afterward, when the sons of God, the fallen angels, came into the daughters of men, and they bore children to them. These were the mighty men who were of old men of renown. You will not hear this in your uh, catechism classes. <laughs> Hello. Because they don't want you to know this. Religion does not want you to know the truth. They do not want you to know that Eve was seduced by the spirit, by the serpent, and produced two sons, Cain and Abel. One was righteous because of Eve, the other one was wicked because of the serpent. They both died. Cain got sealed. He got the mark of the beast from God. When Cain was produced by the serpent, all of his children, all Cain's lineage, became giants. So that's where you have the Amorites, the Hittites, the Parasites, and all the other sites. <laughs> they all became giants. That's where Goliath came from and so forth. And then the sons of God... The other fallen angels came in and put on flesh because they saw what the serpent did. And they came in and about 200 of them put on flesh and went into the women and produced offsprings. Is everybody okay? Amen. All right, good. Now, then the Lord saw in verse 5 that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent of his thoughts of his heart was always what? Evil. Why? Because evil had penetrated now and taken over mankind. you got to understand, this reproduction continued for almost 400 years, 500 years. So in other words, because Noah and his family were the only righteous ones left. And God said, I'm going to kill everyone now. That's it. Why? Because DNA had changed. In fact, these giants began to eat humans. They have found many skulls and they're all over the world. Who do you think built the pyramids? It wasn't Bob the Builder. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. These fallen angels put on flesh, overpowered women, and took wives and produced offsprings of wickedness. These offsprings are now in individuals. Does everybody got it? Because when the Lord killed them all in the flood, their spirits roamed the earth. They are still here now. They're called demons. They are now infiltrated. They're looking for a body of hosts. And they take people's possession. And it doesn't cause their heads to spin or puke funky things. People can be, have demons and not even know it and think that's just their character. Hello. Addiction is a demon. There's many sicknesses that are demons. We've got to begin to understand that everything that is not of God is a devil. De demonic forces. Amen? Amen? Now, these offsprings are now in individuals of the political, governmental, <clears throat> and the secular system. The word secular means 
a society without God. So that's why we have certain parties, even in politicians and, and groups, the Democratic Party is a secular party. They do not want God. That's why they're demonizations. Amen? Amen. That's why they're called, you know, uh, anyways, they're called idiots, what they are. Okay. So in this, the, a secular system of humanity and citizenship that wants a life without God, his character, his integrity, his word, or the Christ. Secular humans are hosted bodies by these demonic beings. Does everybody get this? So when you become a lover of the world, you've got, you're an automatic host for a demonic force. Why? Because that's what invites them. 1 John chapter 3. So you are not fighting flesh and blood. You are fighting demonic forces that are in individuals. Now, let me tell you, no human being would rape and mutilate a child. Does everybody get it? That is a demon. Oh, glory. I could go on. But anyways, we'll hang tough for a second. 1 John chapter 3. In verse 7, let's speak it together. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God does not sin. In other words, he does not sin, or the, the word sin means presence of evil, have dominion over him. For his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifested. Whoever does not practice, everyone say practice. practice. Righteousness is not of God. So can a person fall from being right with God to not with God? Amen. You betcha. Amen. You stop practicing, you will definitely fall back. Amen. And you will open yourself up to demons. Amen. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. Oh, snap. Look at this. For this message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, not as Cain, who was of the wicked one. In other words, he was the offspring of the serpent. And murdered his brother. Why did he do murder his brother? Because he was wicked, evil. But his brother was righteous. Does everybody get this? So the Son of God is is the body for Christ. Now listen. Remember it says, and the Christ, and the power of the Christ. So Jesus, known as the Son of God, amen, was known as the body of Christ. He was the body for the Christ. That was power. Amen? He was the body for the Christ. All right? Hallelujah. Why? Because the only way that you, or, or the only way to defeat the powers of darkness, the only thing that defeats them is the Christ. Hmm. So the Son of God was the body for the Christ to destroy the works of the devil, the fallen angels and demons, because the only, the, pre, the presence of, which is the word of God, the, the presence of God, the word of God, which is the truth, and the power of the Christ can defeat anything evil. All evil forces that try to come against the Christ will lose. They cannot defeat the Christ. Has everybody got it? Because this is a spiritual battle, not a, in a physical world. It is a spiritual battle in a physical world. So the Son of God was the body 
for the Christ. Has everybody got this? We're going to go a little further. Ephesians 2. United in Christ. Oh, yes. In verse 1. Ephesians 2, verse 1. Let's speak it together. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked, what? You walked what? According to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of what? Disobedience. Among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in a lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. Praise God. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with Christ, which, which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you've been saved. Now, grace is not unmerited favor. It's unmerited love. Grace means that there is a plan for you. Amen? Amen. You've been saved by the plan of God. You just got to cooperate with it to maintain it. And raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places where? In Christ. Does everybody see this? In Christ Jesus. But it's actually in Christ. That in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you've been saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is a gift from God. Not of works lest anyone should boast. For we are his what? We are his workmanship created where? In Christ. Does everybody see this? You'll get it. In Christ Jesus for what? Good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Walk in them. Children, we, you and I were once children of wrath before we were born again. Born of Christ. Born in the spirit. Matthew 10. Oh, hallelujah. United in Christ. Glory. Matthew 10, 34. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do not think I've come to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a what? Sword. How many of y'all know that the, the Christ of God was God's sword? Somebody got it. So the sword, I mean, the Christ of God was the sword of God. God sent his sword into this realm. He called him the Christ. And what does it say? I've not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's enemies will be those of his own household. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take up his cross or his sword and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it. And he who loses his life for my sake will what? He will find it. In other words, what he's trying to tell us that there is a new life in Christ. God wants me and you to be his sword now. One of the things he wants, to, he, we get into a place where we are to, totally sold out. Does everybody got it? Sold out. You are sold out in Christ. No longer living out of your soul, you're living out of your spirit. You are so sold out. You're no longer allowing emotions and feelings to dictate your decisions. You're allowing truth to dictate your decisions. You are sold out. Does everybody got it? That's in Christ. In Mark 3. 
So if you're not sold out, then you're in backslidden condition. In verse 20, <clears throat> Mark 3 and verse 20, is everybody there? Amen. It says, Then a multitude came together again so that they could not so much as eat bread. But when his own people heard about this, they went out to lay hold of Jesus, for they said, He is out of his mind. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me tell you, when you get filled with the Holy Ghost, many people are going to say, You out of your mind. You can tell them, you're right. I lost my mind. I have a brand new one. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 22. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has Beelzebub, and by the ruler of the demons he casts out demons. It's amazing in how and even in the Old Testament, and, and they all knew about demons. Man, you speak about demons now, they will arrest you for hate crime. That's why God sent Trump in office. Amen. Those things are going to change. So he called them to himself and said to them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, the kingdom cannot stand. Now he's going to talk about two different things here. And if a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. Now he's talking about a nation or an individual. Amen. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but has an end. No one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man, and then he will plunder his house. Does everybody get this? So again, a house divided cannot stand. That's why when there's torment in you, it's hard to stand. You must get rid of the tormentor. Does everybody get it? You must get rid of, that's why it says, bind the strong man. So that's when you got to just get into the mirror and say, in the name of Jesus, I bind that strong man of deception, delusion, confusion, and whatever it is, sickness, disease, and get rid of it. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. House divided will not stand. Ooh, in the human body, the household, nation, influenced by Hosted beings. Remember, secular bodies are nothing but hosted beings for demonic forces. You and I were secular and we were hosts to many demons. Until we repented, got cleansed by the blood, healed by the stripes, filled with the Holy Spirit. <coughs> Delivered, healed, and made brand new. Ephesians 5. In verse 1, Ephesians 5, verse 1, Therefore what? Be imitators of God. Come on, speak it with me. Be imitators of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also has loved us, and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is fitting for saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore do not be partakers with them. Amen. We do not want to be partakers with them. We want to walk as Christ, not as a body of flesh any longer. In 1 John chapter 5. First John chapter 5. United in Christ. In verse 1, is everybody there? Amen. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ. 
is the Christ. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone who loves him, who begot also loves him, who is begotten of him. By this we know we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. These are not the Ten Commandments, okay? These are God's requests for you all the time in your life. For whatever is born of God, what? Overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is he who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Now, this is he who came by water and blood, Jesus the Christ, not only by water, but by water and blood, and it is the Spirit who bears witness because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these are one. It doesn't mention anything about the Son of God, didn't mention anything about Jesus. Does everybody get it? There are three that bear witness in the eternal realm, the third heaven. It is the Father, the Word, and the Spirit, and they are our one. So everybody got this. And there are three that bear witness on earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and these three agree as one. Now, this is powerful because in this, we've got to understand that Jesus is the Christ, right? So, the Christ is actually the Father, the Word, and the Spirit. Does everybody get this? This is the Christ. The Father, the Word, and the Spirit in Christ. The Son of God is the natural body for the Christ. He was called the Son of God. Does everybody get it? So he was the carrier of the eternal Father, the Word, and the Spirit. Amen? Good. He's all, and Christ, known as also the anointing, in him was the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. So the Father, the Word, and the Spirit are Christ. God said, I sent my Christ. In other words, I'm coming. The whole Trinity's coming, man. All right, now here's a wild thing. The Son of God is the natural body. Amen? In a physical and temporary realm. That's why the body had to die. The Christ is eternal. No one, nothing can kill the Christ. Nothing. He's God Almighty. You can't kill the Creator. When he said, I laid down my life, because no, nobody has power, he laid down the body. The Christ could never be touched. Has everybody got this? <laughs> Praise be God. All right, now, let's go a little further. Hallelujah. Uh, where'd it go? Eight? No, nine. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he has testified of his Son. He who believes in the Son of God has the witness in himself. He who does not believe God has made him a liar, because he has not believed the testimony that God has given of his Son. And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He who has, has the Son has what? Life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. All right, cool. So, Jesus the body... The Son of God was temporary. Amen? Amen? But the Christ that carried, that was in the body, was eternal. Again, the Christ was the Father, the Word, and the Spirit. God sent His Christ Himself. Hallelujah. Okay, now, we are united in Christ. Again, we are united in the blood through, as a family. Amen? It says that 
the three witnesses was the water, the blood, and the spirit. This, these are the three areas where you and I are united together in Christ. Through the blood is a family. Amen. Through the water, which water represents the word of God. Amen. So that we are like-minded. And the spirit, which positions us in heavenly places where Christ is. So we are all united as a family, like-minded, and spiritually positioned. Amen. Acts 4. If you don't get it, you will. Amen. It will come. All glory. Acts chapter 4 and verse 18. Hallelujah. How many of y'all know when you get filled with the Holy Ghost, you'll be persecuted? Well, if you don't know that, you know it now. In verse 14, it says, And seeing the man who had did I say 14? 18, I'm sorry. And so they called him and commanded them not to speak at all nor teach in the name of Jesus. And Peter and John answered and said to them, Whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than to God, you judge. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go finding no way of punishing them because of the people, since they all glorified God for what had been done. For the man was over 40 years old on whom this miracle of healing had performed. And being let go, they went to their own uh, companions and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. So when they heard that they raised their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, you are God who made heaven and earth, and the sea and all that is in them, who by the mouth of your servant David has said, why did the nations rage and the people plot vain things? Is that happening now? Yes. The kings of the earth took their stand and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. This is what you're seeing happening right now. Because many nations are coming against and persecuting believers all over the world. We don't see it on our news here. But it is terrible in other countries and nations. Christians are being burned alive, beheaded, mutilated. It doesn't matter what age. They are out to kill every Christian possibly. Christians are the most persecuted people in the world right now. And it will get worse. But in the meantime, before things get really crazy, the light's going to penetrate darkness. Amen? So in this, we see right now, these things are happening. Nations rage, kingdoms, rulers against the Lord and his Christ. It is excelling right now. But you know what's happening too is, is the enemies are being exposed. Uh, John chapter 1. The Gospel of John. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. United in Christ. John chapter 1 and verse 1. Is everybody there? Glory. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the word was God. He was in the beginning with God and all things were made through him. And without him, nothing was made that was made. In him was life and the life of the light of men. And the light shines in darkness and darkness does not comprehend it. Well, that's why we got a lot of problems going on. In verse 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace 
and truth. Again, the word became flesh. The body for the Christ was prepared. Has everybody got it? Walked. Now, I want you to grab hold of this because so many times we think, well, we look at Jesus as the adult now. But it says the word became flesh. It was a child, a baby. Amen? He was still, the, his body was created by the word of God, not from the dust. The word became flesh. All right? Now, the body for the Christ was prepared and walked as a child or as a son of God or a child of God. That's why he, when he walked as a child, because the Trinity, fullness of the Trinity hadn't come yet. It said the word became flesh. So the word and the spirit, the fullness of the Trinity hadn't come yet. So in this, the word that became flesh, Jesus was a child, wasn't he? At that period of time, his mom and dad, they lost him, or he left, you know, whatever. He was left behind. And they went to go look for him. And when they found him, he was age 11 or 12 or something like that. And he said, I was about my father's business. Does everybody get this? All right. Now, the powerful thing is that when, this, when Jesus was baptized, in water, and the dove came, the spirit came upon him. After that, he went into the wilderness and defeated the enemy because he was the fullness of Christ now. Is everybody with me? The Christ, the fullness of the Trinity, had been manifested in him now. The fullness. That's why after that, he didn't say, I'm about my father's business. He said, if you see me, you see the father. Why? Because the fullness of the Trinity was now manifested. The fullness of Christ was there. Nothing was going to defeat him. Does everybody get it? Woo! <laughs> Mark 16. Uh, Matthew 16. Hey, I was excited when I was doing this, all right? Can't read my own writing, but I can interpret it occasionally. The Holy Spirit has to interpret it for me. Matthew 16. Glory. In verse 13, it says, when Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? And they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he said, but who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, you are the what? You are the Christ, the son of the living God. In other words, you are the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. You are the Father, you are the Word, and you are the Spirit in the body known as the Son of God. And of course, Jesus said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father in heaven. Peter got revelation. Let me share with you, without revelation, restraints go off. That's why it's important for you to seek revelation. Why? Because the restraints come, stay on to resist so that your flesh does not overtake you. Does everybody get it? So the forces of evil do not overtake you. When you get revelation, there's a connection. There's a next move. There's a confirmation of your connection with God to you. you must, that confirmation is essential to you or else you begin to drift. You look for fulfillment in other areas. Everybody all right? Amen. And God wants us to grow. When you're not growing, you end up going. <laughs> Hallelujah. You are the Christ, the God, the Father, the Word, the Holy Spirit, the presence, power, truth, and the body of Jesus. 
The Son of God was offered for our redemption. The body, the Son of God was offered for our redemption. The Spirit of Christ is now available for you and me by the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Glory. 2 Corinthians 5, are you ready for this? Second Corinthians chapter five and verse sixteen. Is everybody there? Amen. Vital information. Therefore, from now on, we recognize no one according to the flesh or the natural. Even though we've known Christ according to the flesh or the natural. Yet now we know him thus no longer. In other words, we no longer look at Jesus as the body of Jesus anymore. That body had, was used as an offering and a sacrifice. Took on all sins and is dead and gone. Why? Because you can't kill the Christ, but you could kill the Son of God. The body. Does everybody got it? Okay. And then he says here, now he confirms it. He says, therefore, if anyone is in what? In the Christ, he is in what? New creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become what? New. New. See, if you were to actually look, I mean, see, we look in the mirror and we look at us. But if you could actually see the Christ in you, it'd blow you away. In fact, you'd be blinded. That's why we're called the light. But if you could truly see, see now the demons see the Christ in you. You see you. But the demonic forces see the Christ. They fear you. So what they try to do is put fear on you. So because as a man thinks, so he is. So they try to prevent you from you knowing who you are. That's why people are in search of identity. That's why people lose who they are. Because they're still looking naturally and carnally and not spiritually. That's why the word says you and I are Christ. We are united in Christ. The word says we're more than conquerors. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We are blessed in every spiritual blessing and seated in heavenly places. And if God be for us, who can be against us? We are Christ. We're not of this world. We're not humanites anymore. We're eternal lights. Glory. Ephesians 3. Is everybody okay? Verse 1. For this reason I, Paul, a prisoner of who? Christ Jesus, for you Gentiles. If indeed you heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which was given to me for you, how that by revelation he made known to me the mystery as I have briefly written already, by which when you read you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, the mystery of Christ, which, it, which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men as it has been revealed by the Spirit in his holy apostles and prophets that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ through the gospel, which I became a minister according to the gift of grace of God given to me by the effective working of his power. To me who am... Am less than the least of the saints, this grace was given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God, who created all things through Jesus Christ or the Christ, to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places according to the eternal purpose. Everyone say eternal purpose. Which he accomplished in Christ 
Jesus, our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in him. Wow. Therefore, I ask that you do not lose heart at my tribulations or yours for you, for you which is your glory. Has everybody got it? The power, the promises in Christ are eternal accomplishment. In Colossians chapter 1. Colossians 1, 24. Is everybody there? Amen. I now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up in my flesh what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ for the sake of his body, which is the church, of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God, which was given to me for you to fulfill the word of God, the mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to his saints. To them God will to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is what? Christ in you, the hope of glory. Everyone say Christ in me. Him we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. To this end I also labor, striving according to his working, which works in me mightily. Wow. Hmm. So you, in other words, there is persecution because of the body. Now remember, we are part, of, okay, so Jesus' body was crucified, right? The body of the Christ was crucified. And in Christ, his spirit, after the crucifixion, uh, after Jesus died for me and you, the Christ, his spirit, was released to anyone wanting to be filled and baptized in the Holy Spirit. So everybody got that. And then after that, now, the body that is here on the earth will suffer like the body of Christ. But we can't die because we're Christ. That's why we have eternal life. But the thing is, again, is that we must perfect the perfect law of the spirit of life, which is to deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. That's essential. That's what the Christ came to do. God sent his Christ. He sent his sword. So you and I are supposed to be the sword for God now in everything we do, right? We are the body of Christ that suffers persecution in the physical realm, but the Christ in us places, in the, places us in eternal places. See, but most people don't even realize that. They're so caught up in themselves. They're caught up in the natural arena. They're still trying to build their own empires instead of a, the kingdom. After Jesus, the Spirit of God came on Jesus, he was about kingdom business. Does everybody get it? He was about kingdom business. Before the Spirit came upon him, he was about the Father's business. But then afterwards he said, if you see me, you see the Father, because he was about kingdom business now. If you are born again in the Spirit and filled, you should be about kingdom business. That's what the Christ's desire is. Amen? Amen? <clears throat> Philippians 4. In verse 10. Let's speak it. It's just one page behind. Just turn left. <laughs> Woo -hoo. Are you sold out? Amen. Remember, you're going to get tested after this teaching. <laughs> What's it going to build? A testimony. <laughs> Some of y'all got tested after last teaching, didn't you? Don't raise your hands. Or the teaching before that, or the teaching before that. <laughs> yes. Philippians 4, verse 10. Is everybody there? 
Nah, I don't want to start there. Let's start at verse 4. What's it say? Rejoice in the Lord when? Always. Thank God that he say rejoice when you feel like it. No. It says rejoice in the Lord when? Always. Always. Praise God. I say again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is what? And hand, gentleness. And the word says a soft answer turns away wrath. Never demand. You only demand over demonic forces. Amen? You come demanding something from me, you ain't getting nothing. Amen? Amen. We don't demand. That's disrespect. Amen? Amen? We respect one another. Why? Because Christ respecting Christ. Unless your light ain't shining so much. He says, let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is where? At hand. What's this verse 6 say? Be anxious for everything. Be anxious for nothing. You know why people are anxious? Because of fear. Fear will nullify everything. It is the strongest emotion that will move a person out of position. Fear. Does everybody get it? Fear. Fear of losing this. Fear of not pleasing man. Fear. Man, don't worry about pleasing man. You please God. But you're not going to please God unless you're in divine order. And you're not going to please God if you're always going by how you feel, making decisions by how you feel. God looks for those that are consistent and alert. Amen? Be anxious for nothing, but in all everything by what? Prayer. Prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. Not your demands. They're called requests. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good, of good report, if there is any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Don't be worse first. There's so much worse first. It's because of fear. Verse 9. The things which you have learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at last your care for me has flourished again, though you surely did care, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am in. To be what? Now, is content anxiousness? Man, content sounds like something dead. That means when you're dead, you trust. If you're in a dead state of being, you're trusting. If you, in other words, if you're dead to yourself, then you're trusting. Amen? Verse 12. I know how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I have learned, both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who what? strengthens me. Does everybody see that? You and I can do all things. Let me tell you, when the Lord got a hold of me, and, and I, there were things, I couldn't read, I couldn't do nothing, man. I was a delinquent from hell. And God grabbed a hold of me, and everything that he was doing with me, every time I would think about, man, I can't do this, he would grab hold of me and say, stop. I want you to begin to exchange everything you can't to do, or you think you can't do, with what I say, who you are. And I began to exchange everything. I would pick up a book. I want you to know that I was only a second grade, third grade reader. The only thing I could read was the race things and the books, <laughs> flash paper, you know, sports, all of that stuff. I knew all the bookies and whatever it was. I could read all of that paper real easy. I could have paper pyramids and whatever. But as for reading books, I hated to read. 
And then when the Lord grabbed hold of me, when he began to say, listen, I want you to know my word. I'm going to interpret it for you. But as you're learning how to read, I want no matter what comes across your path, whatever you think you can't do, you're going to replace what I can do, all things through Christ who strengthens me. And every time something would, and I would I'd stutter or something would, and then he would quicken me. I feel like he slapped me in the back of the head or kicked me in the butt, say, come on. And I would say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And he'd say, say it again, say it again. And then he would tell me, now read it. Now do it. I can do all things through Christ. How many times do you stop because you think you're getting weary? Well, then you better use the power that's in you. And you must speak it. Because you're connecting with the eternal power of God Almighty in you. By speaking, I can do all things. You're allowing him to move now. Now you're cooperating with him. Man, my car used to break down, and I think, gosh, what am I going to do now? And the Holy Spirit would say, what do you mean? <laughs> who told you that? And I'd say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And then I would ask him, show me what's the problem. And he would always show me. See, we've got to come to the end of ourselves. We've got to come out of this world. We've got to live according to who we are as eternal beings in Christ, not as temporary beings. It says that we are more than conquerors. That's a pretty big statement. That means you've already won and you're winning more. Only in Christ. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm not going to go by how I feel. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm a new creation in Christ. All things pass away. All things have become new. Does everybody understand this? Listen, you and I are united in Christ. The word warns us. He said, you have not so learned Christ. If you had, you'd be in a better position than you are. Amen? In other words, we shouldn't be lacking anything. And the riches of Christ are phenomenal. Peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. That's in Christ. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. doesn't matter what you're doing. You just decree it and you connect. Why? Because we are united with him. We are one. And that is the desire of the Lord to be one. Your body may kick and buck, but the Christ in you has dominion. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. <laughs> I pray tonight, Lord, that such revelation will come as not only are we sons and daughters of the Most High, gone from children to men and women of God, no longer just children of God, but men and women of God, maturing and growing, allowing Christ to have preeminence, dominion in us, being led by the Spirit of God that we may see what you want us to see, hear what you want us to hear, and follow those things in obedience. So, Lord, we thank you that we are Christ, and in you we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.